I work at the Oslo University Hospital, uh, uh, Riks Hospitalet, and uh, our group has been interested in the deformation imaging for a long time, and particularly uh, imaging deformation imaging in uh, patients with acute coronary syndrome. Uh, this is the outline of uh, my presentation. First, I will define acute coronary syndrome and uh, non-ST elevation myocardial infarction <coughs> and explain how 2D wall motion tracking works. And then, then I will share with you the experimental and clinical experiences in the use of 2D wall motion tracking in the diagnostics of uh, ACS and, and STEMI. And then, then I will round up with uh, my conclusions. Coronary artery disease is the leading cause of morbidity and mortality worldwide. And coronary angiography is the gold standard for the identification of CAD, and two-thirds lead to intervention in patients with non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome. Acute coronary syndrome comprises ST elevation myocardial infarction and non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome. STEMI patients are relatively easy to identify. They have chest pain on the ECG. As you all know, we see ST elevation. And when we see this, we send the patient directly to acute revascularization therapy. Uh, on the other hand, where we found usually coronary artery occlusion in these patients. On the other hand, NST ACS patients are a more heterogeneous group and comprises uh, unstable angina pectoris and, and, and non-ST elevation myocardial infarction patients. These patients have, again, chest pain on the ECG. We might see ST depression, T inversion, or no changes at all. In case of normal, normal cardiac uh, markers, the diagnosis is UAP. In case of uh, elevated cardiac markers, the diagnosis is NSTEMI. When we send these patients to coronary angiography, uh, within 48 hours, we might find no significant coronary artery disease or significant coronary artery disease or coronary artery occlusion. Importantly, about 30% of NSTEMI patients have coronary artery occlusion, and uh, they share the pathophysiology and prognosis of STEMI patients, and these patients should be promptly identified and sent to acute revascularization therapy just as STEMI patients in order to see myocardium. The method 2D wall motion tracking echocardiography can be used to assess myocardial function. The method uses 2D echo images where the software can identify uh, acoustic markers, these white and uh, black dots, also called speckles, which then are automatically tracked throughout the cardiac cycle. Uh, by tracking the speckles throughout the cardiac cycle, we can <coughs> follow deformation all the way during uh, the cardiac cycle. And please note that maximum myocardial deformation usually uh, is reached at the end of systole at aortic valve closure. This is a schematic uh, image of the left ventricle. We, we saw the deformation, the shortening of the mid uh, uh, septal and a mid lateral segment, and this way we can image uh, regional contraction or, with other words, strain. And since we, since we talk about shortening, the sign of strain is negative, and a normal longitudinal uh, deformation or shortening is uh, around minus 20 percent. We can also assess uh, deformation in short axis view when where we can assess excess circumferential strain, uh, uh, which again have negative uh, strain values, but we can also assess radial thickening, uh, which has a positive sign, and therefore the curves are going upward, uh, the strain curves going upward. As I showed you on the previous slide, longitudinal deformation uh, gives negative strain values, and transverse lengthening, again, gives positive uh, strain values. It's been shown earlier in experimental studies that uh, deformation imaging can be used to identify uh, segments with uh, ischemia. 
This is an experimental study uh, from uh, published in 2005 in circulation where we occluded the LAB artery in dogs for 15 minutes and uh, strain echocardiography and sonomicrometry both showed lengthening instead of shortening in the, the ischemic segment. During reperfusion, uh, there was a slow recovery of function but incomplete recovery of function. When occlusion was sustained for four hours, there was no recovery of function. This is the first uh, clinical study I'd like to present to you, which was uh, published in 2008. We looked at 40 STEMI patients treated with PCI, and then an echocardiography and an MRI was performed after nine months. Uh, by gadol enumerate <coughs> enhancement, infarct size was calculated, and uh, patients were divided into three groups according to infarct size. On the upper left image, we see uh, a figure. We see MRI study of a patient with uh, medium-sized infarction. And below, see, we see global strain uh, curves, radial strain, circumferential strain, and uh, no, longitudinal strain and circumferential strain. And on the right, we see a patient with a large infarction, and we see that there is a significant lower deformation in every direction. The table to the right shows the three groups of patients with large, medium-sized, and small infarction. And as you can see, longitudinal and circumferential strain could not only differentiate between large and medium-sized infarction, but also between medium and small-sized infarction. Uh, uh, so it means it's a sensitive uh, method and it was more sensitive than ejection fraction or wall motion score index, uh, twist or post-systolic short shortening. In this next study published in 2010, we looked at 126 and STEMI patients within 48 hours of symptom onset. Uh, here's an example of the patient who had chest pain on the ECG, we did not see any significant changes. However, angiography revealed a proximal occlusion of an uh, intermediate artery. And here's the result after PCI with a stent. An echocardiography was performed right before the uh, angiography. And here below, we see a bull's eye plot of strain values demonstrating a functional risk area of nine adjacent segments with the systolic function by strain worse or equal to minus 14%. To the right, an ROC <coughs> curve analysis set to identify patients with coronary artery occlusion. And as you can see, risk area by strain at a cutoff value of four or more segments could uh, identify patients with occlusion with a sensitivity of 85% and the specificity of 70% and had, of course, the greatest area under the curve uh, compared to ejection fraction, wall motion score index, risk area by wall motion tracking, uh, uh, by uh, wall motion score and global strain. In the next study, Gren et al. took the idea one step further they looked at 85 patients with suspected NST-ACS, and they did an echocardiography immediately after admission to the ER. Uh, then they calculated territorial longitudinal and circumferential strain according to the perfusion territories uh, of the three major coronary arteries. To the right, again, a ROC curve analysis set to identify patients with occlusion. And here, territorial circumferential strain showed an impressive uh, sensitivity, and sensitivity for 90% uh, and specificity of 88%, an area under the curve of 0.93. The other uh, parameters were not as useful. In the same study, an echocardiography was also performed after three months. And uh, these are only patients with enstemy and occlusion. As you can see, those who got to angiography and PCI after 
more than 12 hours did not improve myocardial deformation in the affected segment. While those patients who were lucky enough to, to undergo <coughs> PCI before 12 hours improved myocardial function significantly. Uh, so again, what I told you earlier, earlier, it is important to try to identify NSTEMI patients with occlusion and send them to acute reperfusion uh, uh, therapy in order to save myocardial. In the next study, we looked at 77 patients with suspected NSTACS within 48 hours of symptom onset. And the background for this study is that the left, and, and we analyzed or we assessed them by layer specific uh, 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 echocardiography. Uh, the background for this study is that the left ventricular wall comprises three myocardial layers an inner oblique, uh, middle circular, and the outer oblique layer. And that the endocardial layer is most susceptible to ischemic injur injury and undergoes greatest deformation during systole in the healthy heart, including thickening and shortening. Before I go on with the study, it's been shown earlier by Adamu et al. and Leitman et al. in 2009 and 2010 that there is a, a gradient, which it was shown by layer-specific echo analysis, that there is a gradient from endo to epicardium, both in circumferential strain and longitudinal strain greatest deformation in the endo endocardial layer, lowest deformation in the epicardial layer. But back to our study, this is just an example of an NSTEMI patient with left circumflex artery occlusion. To the left, we see a patient, uh, we see the four-chamber view of the heart with the endocardial uh, myocardium as region of interest, which is divided into six segments, and as you can see, the segments supplied by the LCX artery show reduced color-coded deformation, while the other segments show uh, normal color-coded deformation. To the right, we see the corresponding endocardial strain curves. Uh, again, the two curves representing the two LCX segments show reduced maximum myocardial shortening, and one of the segments also shows post-systolic shortening. These are the results from this study. Of the 77 patients, 28 had uh, no significant CAD, 21 had significant CAD, and uh, 28 had coronary artery occlusion. When we look at our best parameter to identify significant coronary artery disease, now we are not talking about occlusion, but significant CAD, uh, territorial longitudinal strain, as you can see, there is a decreasing, decreasing deformation as we move from left to the right, the, uh, but the greatest deformation, change in deformation is in the endocardial layer. When we look at our results vertically, we see the endo to epicardial gradient, and the table below <laughs> shows the absolute difference between endo and epicardial deformation. As, move, as we move to the right towards the patients with more severe disease, we see that the gradient is still there, however, however it is decreasing. Uh, there was no diff significant difference in ejection fraction between the groups. Wall motion score index was greater in patients with coronary artery occlusion. And again, a LOC curve analysis set to identify patients with significant CAD. Here, endo and mid-myocardial territorial longitudinal strain had the greatest area under the curve and best sensitivity and specificity to, to identify patients with significant CAD. Unfortunately, the software did not allow uh, total wall thickness analysis, uh, so transmural analysis, uh, and therefore we, we do not know if layer-specific analysis adds to the accuracy in the identification of patients with significant CAD. However, uh, experimental study from last year might give some answers. Uh, in this study, the LAD artery was occluded in rats, and then a histopathologic study 
and layer specific strain analysis and transmural strain analysis was done uh, in the first group of rats after 24 hours after infarction and the second group of rats, rats uh, after two weeks uh, of myocardial infarction. Below we see ROC uh, curve analysis uh, set to identify patients with transmural infarction. And as you can see, endo and mid-myocardial <coughs> circumferential strain was significantly better than transmural strain to identify these patients at 24 hours after infarction. However, after two weeks, this, uh, this difference has disappeared. And it was explained in the article that by the larger infarct size at two weeks and by the increased uh, collagen deposition, uh, they meant that the fibrosis caused a strong tethering, making it, making it impossible to differentiate between the, the function of the different layers. On the other hand, I've seen other studies where, uh, where it was shown that there was no difference in layer-specific analysis and uh, transmular analysis uh, to differentiate different infarct sizes. In conclusion, Assessment of myocardial deformation by strain echocardiography techniques may help to identify patients with coronary artery occlusion and significant CAD in acute settings. It is still unclear if layer-specific strain analysis is better than standard strain analysis to detect acute coronary artery occlusion and significant CAD in patients with NST-ACS. Thank you for your attention.